pressure is certainly affecting my injuries that I've got. Yeah, good day. It's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just listened to a couple of VKs there with the audio frequency amplifier, um, which I think is probably about right actually. So, what I elected to do was to start with the audio frequency amplifier and then use the existing radio as it was as a, um, I guess, as a piece of test equipment for it, sort of to test it out in a real world situation, which um, which worked out well. Um, what I'll do later on, I'll, I'll put it on the, the SIGGEN and the O-scope, just to have a look at that. Um, but what I'll do here, let's just pause and I'll bring up the schematic uh, and have a bit of a chat about where I got to and what my thinking was. Okay, back again. I've just got the, uh, the amplifier now isolated and just coming up to the uh, the O-scope and the other uh, SIGGEN. So just currently sitting on um, 300, or say again, 100 hertz here. And as you'll see down here, it's relatively flat right across um, the audio frequency range. In this particular case, from say 100 hertz all the way through to 20 kilohertz. So that's 1K. And yeah, well up past 20. Now, to be fair, you certainly don't need uh, that amount. Now let me just, before I go any further, let me just flick that over. Um, I just got here the dummy speaker which uh, works out well just to uh, reduce the noise. Um, so what I was going to say, uh, um, in terms of frequency response, um, I don't need anything really beyond say 3 kilohertz because the SSB filter has got a, a 2.7, well it would be roughly 2.7 to 3k um, bandwidth, so from that, so 300 hertz through to 3 kilohertz, so anything beyond that, um, I don't want to say it's wasted, but um, it's just not going to get through the, the IF stage through to the uh, the product detector. So there's no point amplifying that. So I've still got to put some thought into, do I really want to have somewhere in here a uh, an RC, say, low-pass filter, uh, either the import or maybe between the two stages, just to knock down um, those frequencies beyond, pick a number, you know, 3, 4 kilohertz. I think I might worry about that once the this, the, the radio or the amplifier and more the point and the whole radio is, is put together. Another thing I wanted to say too, um, none of these videos are tutorials, so please don't take them that way. I've said this before and I know I keep saying it. This is very much just a video log of me playing around uh, with circuits. Um, right or wrong, it's the approach I'm taking, so you know, you take it or leave it. And as I've said many times again, um, really the whole thrust of, of me doing these is just to encourage others to give it a go. Um, it doesn't take much, and I, and I try and use for myself, but also um, simple methods, simple equipment, uh, rules of thumb where I can, just to make life easy, rather than um, sort of going and getting too in depth with a lot of the design work. And for me, the radios work just fine. Uh, for what I'm after. Uh, another comment that's come up a couple of times too, which I thought I might just very quickly talk to, was the use of other circuits, um, for example, bi-directional IF amplifiers and, and, and some other ones, which are really good. And I guess what I, I would say to that, just the way that I think, um, I'm reluctant to use circuits just straight out of a book or or from someone else if I don't understand how they work. Uh, if I do understand how they work and I understand how they were I guess designed ideally mathematically then great, uh, then I'm more than happy to use those because I can say this is how this is working, this is why that value is that, this is why that value is that and, and, and the like, uh, rather than just sort of just lifting a circuit and just dumping it straight into the radio and saying there you go. So like I say, more than happy to use other circuits but there's a bit of a prerequisite that I, I need to understand how they work. And when it comes to things like this, you know, a, um, an, an integrated circuit, the LM380 is an audio amp, uh, my approach there is, um, looking at the data sheet, if I understand how the data sheet works and how to, to work this correctly, then I'm more than happy to, to, to go with that. Same with things like the SPL1 and that. Anyway, so I thought I'd just mention that, just why I'm not just using some of the more uh, common uh, circuits out there. Um, that's that's the main reason. 
Anyway, so in this particular case, I elected to go back and have a play around with a, a configuration I did some time ago and just didn't really have much joy getting to, to work. Uh, and that's uh, the LM380 combined with a BJT um, preamp, so to speak, or a two-stage amplifier here. Um, when I was doing this before, I was just getting a whole lot of instability and it just really wasn't working very well. Um, and I think I've put it down to um, the prototype boarding I was using over here. Uh, in fact, I'll dig it out of the rubbish bin because I've canned it already. This one here. Uh, it was just causing all sorts of problems and every time I just breathed on it, uh, the circuit would go haywire. And I think it's just, as, as to be expected, um, these holes here just got worn and even though it feels quite solid putting the, the component legs into it, there must be just a bit of corrosion and, and a bit of tarnishing and maybe just a little bit loose and quite honestly, it just caused a whole lot of grief. So I've given that the can and as I get back in the rubbish bin and I'm now using a, a new one which is working out much much better to the point where the circuit's working rock solid so that's worked out really well. Um, I wanted to get that sort of around, you know, pick a number 40 odd dB of overall uh, gain, voltage gain across this just to make life a little bit easier for some of the preceding circuits uh, and I found that's worked out well with, with good stability. The LM380 has a fixed voltage gain of 50 and I was looking to get um, a voltage gain here of that sort of around 5-ish, somewhere around there, which I've had in the past when I've used the, the NE5534. Um, you'll notice here that, uh, and I'll get into it later on, the, for a, this configuration here, a common emitter uh, amplify here, set up the way it is, that the uh, voltage gain is negative RC over RE, it's negative because it's an inverting amplifier, a positive going input here will result in a negative going output uh, at this point here, hence the negative, uh, RC, so 620 ohms over 100, which is that sort of roughly 5, in this case, in particular case it's around 6. Um, so that's that's in the sort of the ballpark, and we'll come to where I got those figures uh, very shortly. So anyway, that's that's the setup there. Common bit of amplifier here, just using the stock standard 3904. Um, that's another thing too. I'll just mention too here. Uh, there's a, a really good video out there with Farhan uh, with his analog radio. Um, he's using J310s, which I've actually got a whole stack here. But there was a comment made. Uh, some videos back where I was also playing around with J310s in a um, in a dual gate mixer scenario that the j 310s quite hard to come by so which is one of the prime reasons why I've sort of elected to to just use where I can um, readily available components in this particular case the 3904 um, so that's so that's why you'll see that one being used over and over again because it's it, as far as I'm concerned it's, it's, it's certainly readily available Anyway, enough said there. So that's the circuit. So just looking now at the, the common emitter stage. So what I did there. Um, right, so in terms of the, how I've approached that, it's a common emitter. It's got voltage divided biasing. I want to set it up that there's going to be 10 times the uh, base current flowing through this uh, voltage divider to make it nice and stiff, so to speak. And... Yeah, right, so into it. First thing was the first, uh, I need to set uh, a couple of um, constants, so to speak. I want to set what my, my quiescent current through the device is with no input signal. Uh, I'm going to set that at 10 milliamps. It's, it's, it's a standard value which I have been using in the past, and I've done that because uh, if you look at the uh, spec sheet, that's where the maximum beta DC sits, at the 10 milliamps range. Um, this is going to be a base rig, I'm not concerned about trying to conserve current and having that lower, so I'm quite happy to have that set at 10 milliamps. The beta DC, uh, again, to try and keep the design approach as simple as possible, I'm not going to throw that um, transistor there into a, a beta tester to come out with the exact beta value, so I'm just going to use the geometric mean. So again, from the spec sheet, at 10 milliamps, you get a minimum and a maximum beta DC, or an HFE, depends on how the spec sheet's been set up, uh, value. Uh, and I'm just going to take the geometric mean. So the minimum times the maximum square rooted comes out at 173. So that's what I'll use from a design point of view, and it's about right. 
So starting off with uh, Little RE, uh, oh, sorry, not, not Little RE actually, just um, our emitter resistor. So another thing I'm going to do differently on this particular radio here is I'm not going to use what I have done in the past and just gone, okay, um, my emitter voltage here is going to be a tenth of VCC. Which, which would have been 1.38 volts for this particular case here or if it's a 12 volt system 1.2 volts here I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm just going to say uh, in all cases my emitter voltage is going to be 1 volt so 1 volt there at the emitter so that's the case and I've just said before that the quiescent current through this device is 10 milliamps then from Ohm's law uh, 1 volt across that device divided by 10 milliamps comes out at 100 ohms and that's where we got that value before. In terms of RC for an audio amplifier, I'm going to try and set the uh, the collective voltage here in the quiescent point of view to be uh, approximately halfway between Earth and 13.8 volts uh, to get a maximum amount of swing. Uh, I am going to take into consideration that we've already got one volt sitting across our emitter uh, resistor, but I'm going to ignore any voltage um, across the collector to the um, the emitter to the collector. So, having said that, if I've got a volt there, I'm going to ignore this. Then my quiescent voltage across my collector resistor is going to be 13.8 volts minus one volt. And then, through Ohm's law, I've just said before that there's going to be 10 milliamps through it. So we can work this out here. So our collector resistor is 13.8 minus one volt divided by two. So we wanted to have half that voltage and then that voltage there divided by 10 milliamps comes out at 640 ohms and I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, set that at 620 ohms which is a, a standard value so again halfway taking into consideration our emitter so again 6.4 volts I hope I made that clear just second guessing myself there for a sec. Right, so R2 now, we'll do, um, always do R2 first and then R1. Uh, we need to work out what our collector current is. Um, our collector current is our, I say again, our base current, that is, my apologies. The base current equals our collector current divided by beta DC. So 10 milliamps divided by 173. So that's where that um, portion of the equation comes in. So, Again, it's going to be Ohm's law here, so we want to work out what the voltage there is. So it's going to be 1 volt plus our PN junction. It's a silicon um, transistor, so it's going to be, well, that PN junction is silicon. It'll be 0.7 volts approximately. So 1.7 volts here. So we then work out 1.7 volts divided by 10 times our collect, uh, 10 times our base current that we want to have flowing through here. And we get this expression here. So 1 volt plus 0.7 divided by 10 times our base current comes out at 2941 ohms and I'm going to use uh, 3k ohms. For R1 here we've got our quiescent 10 times uh, base current but now we've got added to it, I do electron flow, one additional lot of um, base current. So similar equation but it's now going to be 11 times flowing through that. Let me just get rid of that bottom bit of paper. So again, from Ohm's law point of view, we need to work out what the voltage is across R1. What's well, going to be 13.8 volts minus whatever that voltage is. We just said before that that voltage there equals 1 volt plus 0.7. So we've now got enough to work out um, what that value is going to be. 13.8 volts minus the voltage at the base, divided by 11 times now our uh, base, base current, IB comes out at 19030 ohms, so I'm going to use 20k ohms as the standard value. Uh, and that's what we have here. Coupling capacitors, it's going to use a standard uh, 47 microfarads uh, as a coupling capacitor. It's a, it's a nice value there where uh, we know that our capacitor reactance equals 1 over 2 pi um, Fc. So it works out well that uh, at our lowest frequency of operation, which is going to be at roughly 300 hertz, uh, that the voltage drop across here, across the capacitive reactants, is not overly high, and we don't find that our low frequency response is impacted from a gain point of view. And as we saw on the oscilloscope before, it's not too bad at all. 
Um, so close enough is good enough, as they say. It's only in my books anyway. So uh, that's about the only thing I wanted to say there. So I think at this stage of the game I'm going to solder that up. And then I'll start to think about uh, what the next part of the circuit will be. Uh, the actual um, hardware itself, I've got the... Let me just move this out of the way. What I've decided to go with is quite a simple, um, simple I.O. Uh, apologies for moving the camera around the place. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Oh, I can't actually, I'm afraid. So, very, very simple. Oh, gosh. Very simple here. Uh, just an 80-40 switch. Uh, we've got a volume control here. Whoops, there's Off the right-hand side will be the key. Um, our frequency, and that will also change the... Um, the step size. I have a CW spot here, so what I want to do with that is I'm going to use probably 700 hertz as the frequency I want to hear out of the radio when receiving CW. Um, so in order to tune my radio uh, to be spot on the other person's radio, I'm going to use a spot. So by pushing the spot down, I will get um, a uh, a heterodyne I'll be able to compare my received frequency versus my transmit frequency and I'll basically push that down I'll adjust till I get 700 Hertz uh, coming in then I'll know I'm spot on um, I'll explain that much more uh, again later on but that's that's what that button's for uh, CW SSB you've been in tune there so just to put out a, um, a CW tone and Later on, when I build the ATU um, using the, that bank of uh, relays, I will have that being triggered as well, so that'll trigger that RF power. Uh, that'll be combined with the antenna tune, so I can just sort of go for minimum before coming up, and then the microphone on the side. So very simple um, I/O there. Again, that's how I like it. You know, everybody's got their own ideas and, and interests and and likes. I like it simple. I like to be able to see inside and actually how things are going. For the display, I'm going to use a, um, a four-line LCD display. Um, I thought about having the color TFT, and honestly, for what I need and what I like, which is essentially just what is the frequency, you know, what mode am I in, um, I'll have two VFOs for each band, so VFO A and B for 80 meters and a VFO A and B for 40 meters. Having four lines will work out well for that. So. Right or wrong, that's that's the way I'm going to go. Anyway, I have rambled on way longer than I uh, intended to. So I will knock it on the head here, say 73, and start to think about the next stage, which will probably be just finishing off the in here, um, the Arduino and the, and the software to drive this, uh, and then we're off to the races. Okay, cheers all. See you soon.